Well, good evening. Bonky Astronomer here. Well, it's uh, occultation tonight happening at dinner time, so uh, eating sausage. <laughs> the asteroid is called Lorenzalavi. Loren Zalavi. Future Wonky Astronomer breaking in here. I realized later, of course, that I totally butchered the pronunciation of that asteroid. It should be something more like Lorenzo Levy. Okay, the target star is, it's a bit dim, there. There's, there's the little woman there. I'm not the rigged. I'm Yuko. What are you? I'm not one of your stars. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought the laptop to the dinner table. And, um, disgusting. It's just gonna. It's disgusting. It's gonna record automatically. So I've got uh, the only other observer tonight is Dave. He's on target. I have a little bit of problem with cloud. Let's check the uh, sky camera. I think uh, it's being blown out by the neighbour's light. So we can't see much there. Are you excited? Japanese She's eating seaweed. No black paper, okay. Alright, 30 seconds to go now. It's very exciting. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. She's excited. Alright, so uh, here's the star here. Let's watch. Here what we happened? go. What happened? I'm watching to see if this star disappears. Oh, the star. That one. It's a very tiny one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, it disappeared. For me. Did you see it? No, for <laughs> me, it's just still there. Well, it's well, it's still there now. It, mm. it just was about one second. Oh. I'll tell my colleague. Can I have your rice? She took my rice. You <laughs> become old, okay? It's a hard, it's a hard life. Doing observations at dinner time. Well, there you have it. Success. Dave got, uh, he said about two seconds, and he also said, hey, hey. Hey, hey. I don't know what that means. Who said hey, hey? My colleague, he's also watching this <laughs> star. <laughs> well, I'm now going to try to generate the light curve for this event. I'm going to use Tangra here and uh, open the video. There's the video. Now, this um, star is a little bit hard to see. It's, I believe, that one. Very dim. Now, I'm going to use fixed relative to guiding stars because um, it is so dim and it's quite likely that uh, Tangra could lose tracking. That's the occulted star. Now I'll add a couple of guiding stars or comparison stars. That will be auto tracked. Um, a bright one. And maybe a dimmer one. That one's pretty dim. Start. Yeah, I was pretty uh, happy to get that positive because the probability was only 10%, 10.8. So uh, I fully expected a miss. So as you can see, the path is here and that's where I am and that's where Dave is. We both got positive. So um, the path that that's uh, shown here in green must have shifted to somewhere here. Excellent. Well, that um, 
light curve is going to take 10 or 15 minutes. So we'll come back when it's finished. All right, here it comes. Here comes the light curve. There it is. And the blue curve is the target star. So you can see pretty clearly there's the event. I'll zoom in on it. The other curves are the uh, comparison stars. It doesn't look like a really clean disappearance with a, a flat a flat curve at the bottom there, but I think it's because it's uh, it was a noisy signal. I'll just get rid of say the yellow one. But it's not bad. Well it's now the next day and uh, Dave has sent me a couple of images. The first one is his light curve. And you can see the event here very clearly. Like mine, it's uh, quite a noisy signal, but it's very, very obvious where that occultation is. And uh, he's also generated a, a chord plot. This shows the two chords that we measured. Uh, the blue one is Dave's and the red one is mine. And uh, the gap in the chord, or the, the line here, represents time that the star was hidden by the asteroid and from that we can determine a, a physical cross-section of the asteroid or how big it is. Uh, he's fitted an ellipse here which represents an approximation of the shape of the asteroid and it's only about uh, 26 kilometers in diameter and we were only separated by about 18 kilometers across the path so we were very lucky to uh, both get chords because if that asteroid had shifted just a little bit either way one of us would have missed it and apparently this is the first time anyone has observed an occultation by this asteroid so we're the first when I was googling this asteroid I didn't find much information about it but I did learn two things first I learned that it was named after Lorenza Levy not Lorenzo Levy and the second thing I learned was that it's not pronounced Lorenz Alvey. So I wondered, who is this Lorenz Alvey? And with a bit more Googling, I found some contact details. So I sent her an email describing our results. And she replied. This is what she wrote. Hi, Peter. That is wonderful news. I'm glad some good science is coming out of the discovery. I discovered this asteroid when I was a student in Flagstaff, Arizona and working at Lowell Observatory. I've since moved on from observational astronomy into theoretical astrophysics and then on to teaching. So I'm not too in tune with the world of observational astronomy anymore. This email made my day. Thank you. All is well here. Hope you are well too. Lorenzo Levy. PhD. So there you have it, a successful occultation and a message from the asteroids discoverer.